The concept of autopoiesis, a Greek term combining selves and creation, signifies a system that is able to generate and sustain itself. This notion was established by Chilean natural scientists Humberto Maturana and Francisco Varela in their seminal 1972 work. Autopoiesis and Cognition, the realization of the living. They apply the term particularly to the self-regulatory chemistry of living cells this concept has found wide-ranging applications, influencing fields like cognition, systems theory, architecture, and sociology. Organizational theory, too, was introduced to autopoiesis, thanks to Nicholas Lukman. Maturana and Varela, in their 1972 publication, disclosed the origin of the word autopoiesis. While exploring Don Quixote's predicament of choosing between action and creation, they appreciated the potency of poiesis and thus coined autopoiesis, a term outlining the distinctive autonomous dynamics of living systems. An autopoietic system is described as a machine functionally defined through a network of production processes. This network, through component interactions and transformations, constantly regenerates and substantiates itself. This makes it a concrete spatial entity that specifies the topological domain of its realization. The autopoietic system creates a unique, self-contained space that is incomparable to other dimensions. In our interaction with an autopoietic system, we project this system onto our manipulative space and describe this projection. Initially, autopoiesis was proposed as a system description that characterized and explained living systems' nature. The biological cell serves as a prime example of an autopoietic system. The eukaryotic cell, consisting of biochemical components like nucleic acids and proteins, forms various bounded structures that produce components, simultaneously maintaining the cell's organized structure. In contrast, an allopoietic system, like a car factory, uses raw materials to produce an object that is distinct from itself. However, extending this system to include the factory's environment and components, the entire setup could potentially qualify as autopoietic similarly. Cells require nutrients and produce numerous products while maintaining their autopoietic nature. Autopoiesis refers to a system that can self-sustain, autonomously self-organize, and also adapt based on the constant interactions with its environment. According to founder of the term, Maturana, the concept of self-organization is not truly synonymous with autopoiesis due to the operational impracticality it presents. Changes in an organization entail changes in an organization entail changes in the entity itself. Autopoietic systems are inseparable from their associative medium, acting as self-governing feedback mechanisms that continuously adapt based on their environment, a process illustrating a basic type of knowledge or cognition common among life forms. The application of autopoiesis is wide, expanding beyond biological fields to social sciences, as seen in Niklas Lukman's systems theory and Bob Jessup's study of the capitalist state system, and into business contexts like Marjadata Mola's work. Even legal systems have implicated the concept, evidenced by Gunther Tuchner's and Niklas Lukman's work in architecture. Patrick Schumacher uses autopoiesis to describe the self-referential process of architecture creation. Jerome McGann, in the field of textual study, argues that textual systems with their coding and markup represent autopoietic systems, where language and its medium constantly evolve and maintain themselves. Philosopher Slavoj Zizek views autopoiesis, in the context of Hegel's work, as a process where order gradually emerges from chaos. In essence, autopoiesis depicts a balance between a system's complexity and that of its environment. The complexity is not necessarily physical, but lies in its organizational structure and information handling capacity, illustrating systems that can generate more intrasystem complexity than external influences. Additionally, autopoiesis presents a potential insight into the genesis of life, as proposed for molecules' evolution into complex cells that could sustain life. While it is one among many theories, including the chemoton of T. Borganti, the hypercycle of Manfred Eigen and Peter Schuster, Robert Rosen's MR Systems, and AR Systems, and ER Kaufmann's autocatalytic sets, autopoiesis further reinforces the argument that life is fundamentally a system of self-production, and adaptation. Evan Thompson's 2007 work Mind and Life offers a comprehensive examination of the relationship between autopoiesis, a state of self-sustainability, and cognition. Autopoiesis was first defined by Maturana as a characteristic of an organism based on its ability to exist through its interaction with the environment cognition, according to Maturana, is the behavior of this organism as it relates to its own maintenance. 
Computer models demonstrating this trait yet lacking cognition led to the refined concept that cognition must involve some sort of internal metabolic realignment during the maintenance process. Thus, autopoiesis is seen as a prerequisite, but not the sole condition for cognition discrepancies exist in this definition of cognition, as it does not presuppose that the organism possesses awareness or consciousness. The link between autopoiesis and cognition or indeed a living system's cognition, can be objectively determined by observing a living system. The issue of consciousness and cognition as distinct entities arises here. Acknowledging that an organism may harbor unconscious decision-making processes, Naking Processes Thompson labels this as the explanatory gap extending to the profound issue of coilia or conscious experience. Furthermore, Thompson examines the potential of autopoiesis substantiating this link within the inactivism perspective. An autopoietic cell actively interacts with its environment, triggering responses akin to simplified nervous system behavior and suggesting cognizance. Critics, however, have raised concerns over the original and extended use of autopoiesis, expressing skepticism over self-referential language used without external reference. For many, this comes across as an elaborate attempt to validate Maturana's solipsistic philosophy, as expressed by the statement we do not see what we do not see, in what we do not see, in what we do not see, does not exist. In the mainstream biological realm, Rosato, Barry points out that the impact of the concept of autopoiesis and its corresponding cognition, as outlined in the realization of the living, has been relatively minimal. He contends that autopoiesis is seldom used as a determinant for life, 